talking about emotions, um, you know, the socialization of women being more emotional versus men not being able to express their emotion as much. Like with emotions, we talk so freely about how to handle them, but one group is socialized to express those emotions a lot more versus another group is more is is more accepting of like the anger and aggression. That's more acceptable with mostly males versus females and females are more everything is you know good and we're allowed to cry we're allowed to express those things and talk about them openly but not men are not typically men are not conditioned that way or mm -hmm. you hitting way. on something you hitting on something right there because um what you're talking about is is um, you know, some men are taught that emotion that you don't you don't need to express your emotions. You need to be more stoked because it doesn't make you a man. But um, I hate that that's a thing because I don't cry. And it's not that I don't want to cry all the time. And it's not that I have all these tears suppressed because some people be like, well, you, you, you do want to cry. No, I don't want to cry. That's not my go to emotion. My go to emotion is anger. Like if I'm angry that that's automatically the place I go to. And then I go to laughter, but it's not necessarily the tears. And it sucks when like, um, that comes from somewhere because it came from me being taught that like, stop crying, stop crying. That's weak. And like, when you're taught that it's weak, it's difficult to, um, turn around as an adult after it's already been ingrained into you and reconcile, oh man, this emotion is weak. I need to stop doing this. Mm -hmm. And so, um, the people who are taught that, are sometimes the people who have these built up emotions. Yeah. And I'm I was I'm glad you said that too, um, Suge, because a lot of people we always hear boys are raised not to cry. But in the black community, all children are raised not to cry. It's not just boys. In the black community, all children, girls and boys, and everything in between, every gender in between that we could think of, are we are told that is a weakness. Don't cry. Or, or even scared into it. Like, you better stop crying before I give you something to cry about. Like, we, we are. I was about to say that. Uh, yeah. <laughs> I heard that so much in my life. Right. <laughs> right. We are conditioned to, to <laughs> hold that in or to not cry. Or you have to have a really valid reason to cry. Like, like we talked about funerals earlier. You can cry at a funeral. But if you fall and scrape your knee or somebody hurts your feelings, it's like, well, you got to be tougher than that. Like, okay well i can't feel pain i can't cry when i'm hurt i can't cry when i'm emotionally hurt i can't cry at all so yes a lot of us a lot of us are raised that way where it's like i'm not supposed to be crying right now so we anger is the the emotion that takes takes place of that you know what since i've been an adult i cry y'all i cry my ass Me off too. and it, it's like because i didn't get to cry all them years as a kid, now it just comes. And I, I know how to control it. But like, um, when I start to feel sad about something, I'll laugh about it, I'll make it a joke. If people around you are joking about it, we do that too in our in our families. We joke about whatever is hurting somebody's feelings. Cool, but I will take my ass right on in the back room and lay down and cry about it. And I will let my husband know I am crying right now and he will come and support me. But it's like, I, I will cry. That's my go-to emotion now if I'm sad or if something hurt my feelings. It's so backwards now because I used to do the anger thing. I'm glad you can and now your I just husband cry. know. Now, see, that's still a that's still a hang-up for me. I'll cry. I'll cry at a drop of a hat, but I don't like for people to see me cry at all. I try to hold that in. The only person that I'm comfortable totally breaking down with is my mother. I don't like anybody else, husband included, to really see me cry this is why i cried in the shower because the water is cathartic and then i get out and i'm good because i just <laughs> people it's still ingrained in me that people don't need to see that vulnerability in you yeah but also remember though if your kids never see you showing those emotions they're gonna think they they can't do it either so there is a yes. whole aspect of modeling don't get me into kids y'all know that's my thing but i am a firm believer in showing your kids that you have emotions. emotions. You're not always happy and you're not always the get it done type of person. You break down sometimes and they need to know it's okay to do that too. I have consciously had to do that. Consciously had to cry in front of the kids, like not try to wipe it away when they walk yeah. in. I'm like, no, nah, just let them. Yeah. And, and then they, that makes them more empathetic too, because they'll, my one son, he'll come up to me. He came up to me today because I've been having an off day. He came to me today. He said, mom, 
Can't you just tell me what's wrong with you? You told us to tell you, tell, tell you what's wrong with us. Can't you just tell me, verbalize it. Like these, this is what he said to me. <laughs> he said, verbalize it. I said, I'm, I said, I'm fine. He, oh. I said, I'm fine. He said, no, you're not fine. You don't even look fine. You can just tell me. So that, that makes them more empathetic to, to, for, to see you in other states and other frames of mind and other emotions. Yeah. Yeah. I tend to withdraw if I have to show emotions. I'll isolate and be by myself. Uh, me too. But, but that was also pointed out to me by one of my friends. Like they were like, you got hurt and now you upset and been angry about it and you just withdraw and you didn't express how you feel. So how am I supposed to know? How are they supposed to support me if I was not willing to be vulnerable enough to show them that emotion or show them that I needed help? And so sometimes I think that when we get those when those emotions come up, those strong emotions especially come up, we don't even know how to ask for help or don't even want to show them that we need help. And then we're out here on our own trying to handle our emotions by ourselves when really we just need to reach out to someone who can be. And I think that for today, that was very useful for you, Ashley. We all noticed that you just, there were things going on. So he's like, you know what? Let's switch it up. Let's make sure that we give you the space that you need and to make this a, a, a safe space for you. And she wasn't, she wasn't going to dare say, no, nah, I'm not up for this today. We had to like be like, no, nah, we switching it. Um, yeah. But I was going to tap onto that and say, also, people are not mind readers. So for y'all people that go and isolate and don't tell nobody what's wrong with you and then get pissed off at your husband or your friends or whatever when they didn't come and rescue you or help you or support you, you can't do that. People can't read your mind. We can't read your body language all the time either if you hide and stuff. So you do have to, like Keisha saying, you do have to at least let people know what you need or when you need it. Or have a conversation with those people and say, hey, you know what? I realized that the last time I was upset, I was doing this, this, and that. Like, can you look out for that next time? If you see me doing this thing, like, make it explicit for people because we cannot read your mind. You got to tell people when you That's need to know. Some people, some people, those who isolate, I'm one of them. Stay away from me. Um, sometimes have to go and recenter themselves because I am I I can be explosive, and um I have learned to deal with that side of me. To whereas it's like I'm gonna hurt some feelings. I'm about to damage some relationships. Yeah. Some things is about to happen, and y'all ain't gonna like me when I'm finished. And it's gonna be okay with me for the next five years. And so when you get people like that, um sometimes those people do need to go and center themselves or they do need to get alone, be alone. And so always love bombing, which is like just the overabundance of love and being over the top of people is not always good when some people need to sit with their emotions because, um, you know, sitting with your emotions sometimes stop you from saying some very hurtful things or ruining some relationships. And that's just my experience and um, you know what I see. I think I think no, that's, that's a, I think that's point. an experience it's for others great. too. I I just had a couple that I'm mm -hmm. working with where she needs to isolate for that very reason. When things get crazy or they're disagreeing, she said I need to isolate to recenter myself. He doesn't understand that, so he's like, "Well, I want to support, make sure you're okay." I'm like, "But if she need, if she is explicitly telling you I need to be alone for just a moment to to center myself." And that's what you give. And then we actually did some great work in that session because the route to why she needs to isolate to center herself, she said, you know, I didn't have those parents that that asked me how I was doing, that came in and checked on me. So I learned to take care of me. I learned that it was just me that I had to depend on. So now it is very hard for me to depend on other people. So I need that alone time. So it's very interesting to think about the roots of that. Um, and also another quick thing for me, I isolate as well, but also I struggle when people do reach out and ask me the, I swear this is one question I hate and I know it's coming from a good place, but when people say, how can I support you? I'm like, I don't know. I just don't know. I don't know what to tell you. I don't know what to tell you. <laughs> oh, you get that? Because I, I get, I get the what's wrong with I, you. I get, That's the I one get, I get. And I'm like, I get damn. the what's wrong with you from a lot of people, from other people in my life. But, but like, I have a, I have one friend in particular who always says, how can I support you? And I feel so bad because I don't know how to answer that question. I don't know what to tell you to do. I'd just be like, leave me alone and um, come back to me later. Like, I'll come to you. 
that's more of me. It's like, I'll come to you because I'm, I am pretty transparent and some people are pretty transparent. If you get somebody who's transparent and they have to isolate for a while, sometimes they, they might be trying to harness that transparency and then be like, okay, well, let me come to you later on. But when you are that person that needs to harness that and needs to come to people later on, you also need to be like, I need a moment. So I teach my kids to say, I need a minute. Mm -hmm. And th just because I, I don't want to have you following me and harassing me. And then, then I'm like, well, she won't leave me alone, but they don't know that you need that right. alone time. Right. They don't know that you need to center yourself. And that's called emotional regulation, yes. which is when you are taking care of your own self so that you can manage your own right. emotions. And, yep. um, that's a, that's a skill that I teach my kids and that some full grown adults don't have and that they need, that people need to work through. I agree, Shug. I teach my nephew the same thing. And I also try to help my mom and sister as well. So when he has a tantrum or falls out, stomps his feet and stomps off, they're like, my sister immediately blows up. I said, no, he needs a moment. And I'll say, do you need a moment, bub? And he was like, yeah, I need a moment. And then he stomps <laughs> off. And I'm like, okay, we'll be here when you're ready to come back and talk. And he said, like, and he'll go off and he'll wait like, it'll be like five minutes past and then he'll come back. And I try to get them to regulate. And so I try to teach them full regulation. Yes. Like y'all mm -hmm. regulate, yes. he regulates. And now everything's good. Yeah, he's fine. So what? He's feeling an emotion. We have to acknowledge that kids have emotions. They just don't know how to verbally verbally say it like we do. If we're frustrated, we say we're frustrated. When a kid's frustrated, he's slamming doors, stomping his feet, whatever else he's going to throw something. That's how they mm -hmm. express their emotions. That's some adults, That's too. Some adults, too. Yeah. some adults don't know yeah, how to say. They don't know what feeling they're yeah. feeling. They'll say that they're angry, and actually, you they hurt you hurt their feelings, and they're actually sad. But they're gonna act like they're mad, and they're gonna say they're mad, and they just don't know what they feel. So adults, anger is an easier emotion. Right, you anger right. is an easier emotion to tap into. Um, and then two, but you gotta make sure when you say I need a moment, you have to come back. You can't just stonewall. Stonewalling is a is a Gottman concept where you walk away and you don't bring it back. You don't come back. Like you just stonewall and don't talk and don't say anything and don't come back to the situation at hand. You need your space. You need your time to recenter, but you have to come back and talk about those things because otherwise they just fester. And now we go and blow up over something small later. So you have to come back, talk it through, but yeah, isolating to center yourself. That is perfectly acceptable. Um, and with kids in particular, making sure you come to their level, like the way Keish just explained it is beautiful because when you escalate with anybody, they're going to escalate with you. People typically match energy, especially kids. Yes. So if you are, if a kid is having a tantrum and you start yelling, they don't know anything else to do but to escalate further. If you want somebody to calm down, you have to actually appear calm and they will start to mirror you. They will start to mirror you if you do that. So with the kid, get down to their level. Not, eye yeah. level. Not my three-year-old. Get eye level with them. Because you also have to realize as an adult, you're way bigger than this kid. So if you're standing over them, that's a fearful thing. Get down to their eye level, calmly talk to them, and they will likely come down as opposed to go up. But we know as adults, if somebody come at you screaming, what you going to do? Scream back. So you match energy. So if you come yeah. to somebody calm, they're more likely to be calm. When and this well, is, I use the thing in therapy. Yeah. I think we need, we also need to put out there that this isn't going to go it's perfect not. every it's time. Not. Like, oh, this is going to be, if, if I calm down, no, because my nephew gets on my nerves sometimes and I have slipped up and started yelling, but then I have to realize that, oh, okay, you calm down, he will calm down. Yep. So, yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. I'm glad something. you said that because people think that therapists are always sitting in there like, all right, honey, let's engage your nervous system. And that's not what yeah. we're doing all the time. We, <laughs> have to yell. we yell and we act this way. <laughs> yeah, like we do that too. Some therapists spank. Um, I spanked my kids. I will never sit over here and lie and say I don't. Um, you know what I mean? I I believe in sometimes positive punishment. I I I sometimes lose my cool and have to go back and apologize to people because I've acted a plum fool. And um, so what I've what I'm like learning to what I'm learning also <laughs> while I'm teaching the kids is the anger iceberg or the anger tree. The anger iceberg. What's that? Like so that? um. So the anger iceberg and the anger tree is, okay, you're defensive. That's the emotion, right? But then under every single emotion, there's a reason why there is that emotion. And so just like that, that's one of the branches. But then you go to the reason, the root is up under, right? It's up underneath the soil, up underneath everything that's been going on with you. So why am I defensive? 
Okay, let's get to the root of it. So then the root might be because everybody always came at me and made me feel like I was stupid when I had something to say. And then, um, okay, well, why am I sad or why am I hurt at somebody calling me um, ugly? Okay, the root of it was because some, they've always done that. And then I feel embarrassed when, when that happens to me because it takes me back to that moment where that happened to me. And so for every emotion, there's always a root. And we might not always be thinking about that root at that time, but later on when you self-reflect and self-reflect is looking at everything that's happened to you or, you know what I mean, just looking at how you were in the situation and how the situation affected you and why the situation affected you. When you self-reflect, you might find out, okay, that wasn't her stuff to hold. She was just trying to be nice by saying, um, how can I support you? But I took offense to it because I've never been supported in my life. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Soundstripe.